Hello and welcome to the Lawrence Plays channel where it's time for another Factorio update. So this is part two of this week's update where we're going to have a look at um, what Mike and what Mark have been up to recently. And so I think it's fair to say that Mike's big project recently has been working on the um, the, the module building facility uh, factory that he's been, he's been producing up here right on the sort of the, the top edge of the base. So the idea of this system is that it's going to bring in all of the various different bits of nonsense that are required to make the modules and then start making all of the tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 mo modules all, all up here in one place. So as a sort of starting point of that, he's put in some additional stations down here. Are any of these actually programmed? No, they don't appear to be. Maybe these are output stations then. Up here he's got that big array of stations we were looking at last time where he's going to be bringing in all kinds of different ingredients that are required for all the different um, all the different products that are going to be all the different modules he's going to be making here. So at the moment he's started using the silicon, plastic and glass and those are all being piped off down here along with the copper. They're all being piped off down here into this facility and this is making all of the electronic components because we're going to need a lot of those. I I don't know whether he's got a little bit carried away because this does look like a very, very large factory. I feel like he might have overspecced it in, in the same sort of way that I overspecked the uh, the red, the red and green circuit factories over here. That where they've taken a massive dump of copper from the uh, from the smeltery area and then ripped through that really quickly before there's even a chance for another train to come out. And the only time it actually stops and calms down a little bit is when the red circuits are all filled up over here, meaning that the only red circuits that are being used are the small number, of, relatively small number of them, that are going up these two half belts over here in order to make blue circuits. Um, and actually, looking at this, I do wonder if I should be now bumping this up to using all of the um, all of the blue circuit production machines over here because. At this point, we got to the point where we we we, uh, we we have a flurry of them being used by by the um, uh, by by the facilities around the base, and then it takes ages for them to, for them to fill back up again. So if we look in here, we've got less than a train's worth. So I think it probably would be worth coming in here and just um, rotating these like this. And then we can bring bring this facility up here to run at full speed, which means when there's a full supply of red circuits here, then we can start all of this running a bit more quickly, produce the green circuits faster, to produce the red circuits faster, in order to produce the blue circuits faster. Um, at that point, we'll then yeah, the train turns up a bit sooner, and everything everything will then run hopefully a bit more smoothly and a bit more quickly, a bit more efficiently, and just a bit more. Now, granted, that is going to put an, a heavier load on the copper um, supply over here, and therefore on the copper smeltery, but if it's caught up now, maybe that'll be okay. I don't know. We'll decide whether we actually want to do that for real or whether it's just going to be something we have. Uh, I, I've done in this video and then disappears when we uh, when we load up the saves next time. <laughs> so yes, over here, making lots and lots of um, in, in electronic circuits. Because if we start having a look at the modules, we can see that all of the tier one modules. So this this one, uh, the, the uh, speed module takes green circuits, electronic components, and solid fuel. The productivity one takes green circuits, electronic components, and glass. And this, the efficiency ones take copper cable, electronic circuit, and, glass, and, and, elect and electronic components. Now all of these, and I think they take different numbers. So it's ten electronic circuits for that one, twelve for that one, and fifteen for this one. Yes. Yeah, so the idea is it scales a bit depending on how useful the modules are. So generally in in play most of the time, the, the efficiency modules are. They're the least useful because all they really do is they, they reduce the amount of energy your, your machines use and they reduce the amount of pollution you kick out. Now, reducing the amount of energy is, is useful, but when you've got something like this producing essentially unlimited power, it doesn't really matter. You can you can get away with using huge quantities of, of energy, and it, it 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 doesn't really matter. The pollution it only knocks ten percent off for a, a tier one module to fifteen and twenty and so on. Um, so it, it doesn't it doesn't make an enormous difference. Speed modules are better. They I mean they make your machines run faster, so you can produce more stuff with the same number of machines. Great. Um, but to be honest, this gives you a fifty percent speed. Uh, sorry, a twenty percent speed boost and a fifty percent energy boost. To an extent, it's not. They're not really that valuable. You might as well just put in twice as many machines, or fifty percent more machines. Then you'll get more stuff coming out than you would just from using these speed modules. Productivity modules, on the other hand, these are really good because yes, okay, you use a lot more energy, but as I've just said, energy is cheap, um, and you lose a bit of speed. But you get that plus four percent productivity boost, and that means that for um, every time you you run the machine runs, you get a little bit of extra stuff out of it for the same amount of input. So at that point, you're starting to get free stuff, and that's really really valuable. So that's why the productivity modules are a bit more expensive. Now later on, once we've got beacons, the speed modules will become, will become valuable as well because the ideal setup for the, with productivity modules, because you get such a speed penalty, especially when you start using the better ones. Um, 
is to is to put in uh, put your machines in, fill them up full of speed uh, productivity modules, and then put beacons in nearby with uh, speed modules in, just try and bring that speed back up to something that's not quite so terrible. So if you put in say, if you ha if you, if you, if you, if you put in four of these, you'll lose 80% of your speed, which is a lot of speed to lose, and I think that I think that's the minimum speed you can you can get down to. It's certainly the minimum minimum amount of energy you can get down to. But then if you then put if you can then use some speed modules and um, and say a couple of those. Okay, it has to be four of those because you only get 50% effectiveness from a module from a beacon. But you can then get you can that bring, you can use that to bring you back up to running at maybe maybe even normal speed if you use the bigger beacons. So between the efficiency the productivity modules and the speed modules you can yeah okay your power usage goes through this through the roof but that's not too much of an issue because well but firstly, as I said, power is cheap and easy to get hold of. And secondly, if you've got massive beacons, you can also potentially then chuck a few um, efficiency modules in them to bring the um, to bring the power consumption down a little bit. And the later on later efficiency modules will knock quite a lot of energy power uh, consumption off. So let's say you go in and you use four of each of these, then you're going to be bumping up the um, Productivity by 32% from that, so you'll get an extra third of absolutely everything. Um, your energy consumption is going to go up by uh, a factor of, uh, to four times what it was before. Then, plus using these to bring it, bring that um, speed back up again, um, that'll then lead you to be using an ex another another 300 percent on your on your previous energy so now you're using almost seven and a half times what you were using before but then if you can stick in some of these as well each of those knocks out 100 percent of that so um so you then then that will bring you back down from sort of 750 or eight yeah 750 percent back down to say 350 percent which is a massive improvement so balancing these together can be quite valuable now, what most people will do is they'll put in the most powerful predict productivity modules they can and then use speed generally elsewhere and they won't worry about energy because, as I said, energy is cheap. And that's a, that's a, that's a, that is a generally a pretty good strategy and probably one I will end up, uh, probably the one we'll end up going for in the end. But there are a few machines, particularly the particle accelerator, where especially when, when you're first putting these in, it's very, very valuable because they use... Um, uh, max up to 100 megawatts each it's quite valuable to chuck a, um, a product uh, sorry an, an efficiency module in there because you can then bring that down to 20 megawatts and then think about perhaps putting some um, uh, some productivity modules in as well to, sort of, to balance it out a little bit so yeah it's um, it, having the efficiency modules do have their place and they can be quite valuable so yes that brings me on to what Mike is trying to do here and the reason he's got so many stations up here um, and is uh, is because between the different various different types of modules, and the hope is that we'll be able to build up all the all of the first three of them on, on on the ground here. You've got okay, so you've got one, two, you've got the electronic components which he's having to make on site because we're not making them anywhere. But he's bringing in green circuits and solid fuel for this one. Then he's going to be bringing in well, the copper's already here for um, for, the, for the electronic components, so that's that's all right. He doesn't need additional ones for the for the one that requires a copper cable, which I think was this one. Um, but then he's also going to require the glass for this one for the uh, for the productivity module. So that's um, uh, you need th three components for this one. That's a fourth one, five, and then six for the solid fuel. So that's that's six stations already, and that's just for the tier ones. The tier twos. Okay, so we've got the green we've got the green circuits already co covered, but we're also going to need to bring in red circuits and small electric motors. It means you're going to need iron. So that's another two. I think that's eight eight things now, and that's just the speed modules. Uh, sulfur, that's a, that's nine, and batteries, that's ten, because Tristan's already made a battery city somewhere, I believe. Then we move on to tier three, and he's going to have to find Immersite from somewhere and blue circuits. That's um, twelve, I think. I'm starting to lose count a bit here. <laughs> Over here, we've got Vulcanite. Vulcanite's going to be relatively easy because I'm going to be dropping that in from the sky, so we might actually just put in a um, a delivery cannon chest for that one. But even so, that's yet another thing. And over here, we're going to need cryonite as well, so which, which Tristan might just drop in from the sky. So as you can see, there's a lot of different um, resources required to make those first three tiers of, um, of, of, um, of, of modules. And I think that's why he's made quite so many stations here. But I think he was also saying that this actually isn't going to be enough. It's such a crazy quantity of stuff required that even this tower here isn't going to be enough. That might be why there's these ones here, or they, these might be output stations. As I said, no, these are output stations. Look at the way the belts are flowing. So this must be... I don't know why there's four of them, but because um, there's only three types of modules. But he's got, he's, yes, he's got uh, a lot being required over here. Whether we're actually going to be making modules in the sort of quantity that you transport them around by train, I mean that seems like a lot. But then this is also a long way from um, from the area where we're likely to be using them. So I don't know. We'll um, we'll see we'll see how that goes on and later on. 
Um, but yeah, he may he may well need to be extending the, um, the the stations all the way up through this lake, or perhaps putting in another column of them over here. Um, I think he's sort of got the vague idea of putting in the uh, the assembly machines in this area over here once he uh, once he starts making them. So we shall, we, shall, we shall see how that goes when he gets around to making it. But this is going to be a massive, massive undertaking. I hadn't realised quite how big a job it was going to be. Um, although, that said, I think he's possibly overbuilding slightly here. But then on the flip side, if you're going to have a module town, it's going to need all of these inputs. So, yeah, why, why not? Maybe he's going to also be shipping out... Um, electronic components here and possibly the small electric motors and any other intermediate things that just happen to be built in this area i don't know we'll um we'll get we'll get another report from him on next week and find out what he's what he's planning there he's also done a bit more fishing um which presumably means slapping a uh, deconstruction planner over the over, over all the fish in the in, in the lake over here again so we've now got some fish which is nice because i'm going to start shipping them up into space in order to make um, bio sludge out of them because as, as i said last week that seems to be a nice way of doing it but that's not going to happen yet because i'm still out messing on messing around on the vulcanite planet and i think i'm going to be out there for a while there's quite a lot to be done there it's going to be a fairly big project um tristan's already spent a one and a half streams because of the technical difficulties we had and the uh, the server crashing um out on the cryonite planet so and i've spent half a well i've spent less than half a stream out on the vulcanite planet so yeah it, it, it's going to take us a little while, I think. Um, he's upgraded, done some upgrades in the smeltery as well. So over here in the smeltery, oh, there's some um, roboports waiting to be put in up here. That's interesting because that's a bajillion miles. Oh no, it's not a bajillion miles away from the roboport network. Our roboport network is trying to take over the entire world. That's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I mean, on the one hand, this is this is good because it means you can make a change over here and a, a robot will come over and do it. On the other side, it's a little silly, because if you ask for something from over here, it's going to take several days for the robot to get from here to over here. It's one of those things where you do it and you say, and then we'll see this happen in next week's stream. So, it's, yeah, it's going to be a bit a bit crazy, um, but this is going to allow this expansion here to the for the uh, stone brick station to be done automatically and, and so on. So the upgrade he actually said he'd done was upgrading some belts from yellow to red in the... Um, Yes, the iron plate pickup. So yeah, I think I remember how this was going. In last last time I looked at this, we had yes, we've got the red belts coming down here. I think we had red belts going across there as well. But it was these ones coming down here that are bringing the iron down into the iron plates down into the station. These were all yellow, so we had a much slower throughput there. And actually, even with this having been upgraded, you can see that it's still not flowing quite as quickly as we'd like because these these warehouses are all completely empty they're just getting passed straight over into the train as soon as the um, as soon as the iron shows up so we we do still have a problem with with the throughput rate of iron um, even though uh, Mike went in and put in these speed modules in here which absolutely horrified everybody who saw it because ideally this sort of product production you want to be pumping it absolutely full of productivity modules because I, I think my numbers were a little bit out last week when I said you could get something like two and a half times as much out um, because there's some of the stages where you can't use uh, productivity modules apparently we haven't we haven't tested this out yet but I think we'll we'll get there eventually but as I was saying we can get take the iron ore you can make it into enriched iron which you can you can I'm almost almost certain you can productivity module that the enriched you can then make into um, molson. Maybe this one. I think this might have been one of the ones you can't. You can't um, productivity. I'm not sure. We'll look into this later. Um, but we can't do this until I've got pyro. Until I've sorted out the pyroflux, which means vulcanite. Um, so you know, that's um, that. That'll come, but not just yet. Um, and then maybe more. Maybe it was this stage, or maybe there, one of the one or two of these stages on the way through here. Actually, what seems quite likely is that maybe you can't put modules in a casting machine. That seems like the sort of thing that might be the case, but I, I, I don't really know. But I do know that my uh, I've been told that my numbers last week were a little ambitious. So check the comments on that video for uh, for more details. But yeah, this is this machine. This system here is is running as fast as it can. We've got these um, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight red belts of ore that, uh, that are mostly full, flowing in and then being turned into uh, enriched and then into actual iron as quickly as possible. Um, but the problem is that's required for both the uh, the iron plates down here, which as you can see, this train is now coming up to uh, to steal all of, um, even though there's only like 400 in each of those. Um, <laughs> And then it's also required over here for the steel production, which is going on in this area. And I think, no, we haven't actually put any more modules in these. Um, so we're not doing this quite as efficiently as we might be, but or as product productively as we might be. But it is still taking, it's taking in the other half of the iron supply. And if we look down here, we've got the same sort of thing where these warehouses are 
basically empty it's all got dumped straight into a train and the train is not yet satisfied so we are we are still having productivity problems here but i think this is now on my shoulders because we need me to get the uh, the vulcanite flowing because once we've got the vulcanite flowing we start doing the pyroflux based smelting and that is going to mean more productivity modules and hopefully we'll also then be able to pull out beacons or at least design it with beacons in mind in order to bring the speed back up so we don't need quite the same acreage of um uh, of, of smelting array the other advantage of, uh, of putting down beacons and using modules to bring the speed back up is it means you need a lot fewer productivity modules. So you get quite a big saving in modules there. Again, as, as I was saying earlier, it uses more power, but it does mean you don't need to chuck quite as many modules in, and you've seen how expensive modules are, so I think that's going to be quite valuable. So as you can see, this, this means we're, that we've got several things uh, working all towards the same general goal here. We've got me going out to get the vulcanite in order to produce the, um, in, in order to allow us to do pyroflux smelting. We've got Mike making the modules in order to make the smelting more efficient, more uh, more productive, and faster. Um, he's also going to need the, um, the the vulcanite from me for that. He's going to need the cryonite that Tristan's getting again to make the modules, and then moving on to Mark. He's going to. Mark has been over in this area, I think. Yes, this area here is going to be is going to be receiving the vulcanite that I'm producing from my um, uh, on on the on the volcano planet Teka to, to, to whatever it's called a Takeshi something or other like that. I can't remember the name of the place. It's a bit weird. Um, it's going to be receiving that and then shipping that and passing that around the rest of the system. So there we go. There's a, there's a delivery cannon chest here. So that we're going to have um, a delivery cannon dropping in a steady stream of vulcanite into this chest, <clears throat> which is then going to be passed out up here. Um, we've already got, we've got, already got um, lots of modules in here. So this is going to go quite nice, nice and quickly. If we look at the numbers over there, you can see we're getting 12% productivity and speed is... Where's speed? A crafting speed, craft speed is one. That means the crafting speed has been brought back to normal. So the um, the the tier. The, the, uh, with, with the modules, the one speed module is cancelling out the speed decrease from the two productivity modules, but we are getting a plus 180% power from that, uh, power increase, increase in power use from that. So we're getting a 12% productivity boost, but 180% power increase. Um, if that sounds balanced or fair, um, well, it's up to you. I suppose that's up to you whether, whether you consider that to be a balanced and fair uh, way of doing it. <laughs> it's a lot of power either way, but power, as I say, power is cheap. In fact, power is free. It's just building up more power. Um, it's one of those things where the actual each, each unit of power is absolutely free because it's coming from nothing apart from water, which is a genuinely free resource. However, building up the infrastructure to provide more power per second is uh, cost, cost, cost infrastructure equipment and so on. But anyway, so this is this is bringing in um, stone, and it will be bringing in vulcanite, and that allows us to produce pyroflux, which is basically the sort of I, I, I don't know quite how to describe it in the point of view of the, this game, but it seems to be a liquid that can be used in smelting in order to make um, it burn hotter or more efficiently or more productively or something like that, that allows you to then use a be better uh, method of produce, producing the iron. So the idea of this is that we'll produce, um, yeah, each, each of these columns will produce a certain amount of power flux. It gets passed, then passed down these pipes into a station here where it can then get taken away by trains to, to the smelteries or wherever else it's need, wherever else we need power flux. Also got the belts coming down here from the delivery cannon chest. So they're going to get half, the theory is half of it will go each way or at least until the point where both sides are satisfied. And that will go down into a station down here and hopefully we've um, we've got all the limits set. Nope, Mark hasn't set the limits on these chests, so um, <laughs> might need to consider doing that before the uh, before before we just put in infinite quantities of um, of vulcanite into here. Although that said, you know, it's probably not entirely a bad thing as long as we have the the uh, shipping capacity to to fill all of this up. Um, that's probably it, it. Doesn't really matter if we if we uh, if we have the, if if this fills up as long as we don't run out of it for pirate flux. Um, Yes, so we're going to be, yeah we're going to be doing using this using this system. Oh, he's not put the um he's not put the limits on these um on the belts here either to make sure this outputs evenly. We'll have to that's that's it. But I mean this area isn't isn't entirely finished as you can tell by the way it's not actually doing anything yet. Um, but yes, this is going to give us a supply of vulcanite on the, that can be taken away by train, a supply of uh, pyroflux that can be taken away by train, and here we've got the stone coming in for the pyroflux uh, construction uh, construction manufacture whatever you want to call it. So yeah, this is this is going to deal with all of the vulcanite that I'm going to be producing in very very large quantities. Hopefully, um, we'll see how fast that actually works because we haven't really tested this and to see what the throughput's going to be like. But you know, if it doesn't work fast enough, then I'll just build another one and another one and just make it go faster and faster and faster until we've got enough coming through. That's how this sort of thing works. I uh, I I've played this game before. So a very important part of this system that uh, that Mark has also also done is he's built he's built up something on the on the um, on the bus to 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 build the delivery cannon chests and the delivery cannon 
delivery cannon cannons no yeah the delivery cannons themselves um so if we have a look let's have a look down on the quick look down on the bus and see if we can actually find them um now normally i would expect something new to be just tacked on the end of the bus but it does that doesn't seem to be the case i think mark is attempting to be sort of tidy and compact and stuff and adding in adding in where um sort of part way along the bus wherever there's sort of the right sort of ingredients to, uh, to 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 make whatever it is he's trying to make um and i'm not going to criticize for that because i tend to do the same sort of thing because it um at least partly out of laziness because if you've already got something that's bringing out all of the um all of all of the components you need off the bus then there's no point in going in and doing another assembly system it's just going to be pulling off exactly the same bits and pieces just to make another uh just just for the sake of it but um i don't i don't see it this is up here Oh, here we go. There's the delivery cannon chests, and there's the delivery cannons themselves. So, for this, he seems to have brought in. Um, yes, he's brought in the uh, heat shield tiles. So that's been another spaghetti out of there. You can tell. You can tell when someone's added extra bits in because then you start to get things like this. This belt, where it's it comes through and it's spaghettied up from somewhere sort of off into the next build area and then brought across and un goes underneath everything and is squeezed in up the middle like that. So, yeah, there's clearly been a bit of that going on here. He's also making the uh, casting machines as well, by the looks of it. So that's something we're going to need when we get really, really on with the, um, the pyroflux smelting because that's going to produce the molten iron that's then going to need to be turned into ingots, which can then be turned into plates. So it's a couple of extra steps, and I was like, this is what I was, why I was saying, why I was thinking it was going to be so good for producing the, um, uh, for putting product productivity modules in. However, I've been told that's not quite so much the case uh down here well i suppose these these big motors were already coming in so i can't criticize that too much and actually so was the concrete for the for these assembly machines so <laughs> there's been a bit of spaghetti put in here but it could be a lot worse i yeah it, it yeah this area does kind of produce things but it's there's not going to be much more expansion well expansion along here is going to be tricky because if you, if you look at the way every, all of everything's sort of coming in at funny angles it means that if, if up here you needed the um i don't know the big electric motors again or the um or steel actually no steel would probably be possible but you're getting a lot of sort of twists and turns of the belts coming through here it's not a nice sort of neat bus or even a mini bus type system um, he says he's done flare stacks as well, but I'm not. I'm not going to go looking for those. But somewhere, somewhere on the on the on this bus, we're making split flare stacks. And the reason he's made all of these things is the, those are all the bits and pieces that are required for the. Uh for the big blueprint that of all of the of, well this this big blueprint here this one that makes the um uh, makes the capsules from core fragments so core fragments in here capsules out over here so in here we've got a couple of flare stacks uh, one's going to be for the mineral water the other is actually for the uh for the pyroflux but i might try and find something to do with that um we yes we are using free power out on the uh, on the other planets um but I mean, it feels wasteful not to use the steam from the vulcanite production and the pyroflux for, for, for at least at least for something like power. Um, I don't think there's a way to turn it into explosives. That would be rather nice. Or into oil. turning it into oil would be even better. But I don't think it's that sort of stuff. I don't think it's meant to be an oil. I think it's just sort of something that uh, that burns or gets hot or does something is reactive in some way. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it's supposed to work from a chemical point of view. Maybe somebody who knows a bit more about chemistry can tell me uh, if, 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 if it's remotely related to anything real worldy, basically. Um, but yeah, so this requires the uh, it requires this, these stacks. We're going to need um, delivery cannons and delivery cannon chests for using all of this stuff. So yeah, it made sense to have those built up as well. Um, he's put in more power, so presumably some more and more and more of these blocks. Every time we every time we look at this, it gets bigger and bigger and probably louder and louder. So let's not look at it too much because, as I say, it's a bit loud. He says he's um, fixed science in space. I'm not quite sure what he means by that because I was under the impression that it was working. It's possible he's put in additional machines to do something. I, I noticed that we now have enough um, belts coming along here, but I think I thought that was something I'd already done. I thought I'd already split that all of all of the um, the belt assemblies off except for this one down here. So I don't I, I'm not sure what he's done, but he said he'd fixed it. So I'm sure he, he means he's, it means that means he's done something up here. He'll probably tell us in the comments. Subtle hint, subtle hint. <laughs> And finally, um, he's done a bit more, bit more combat up in the north. So I think that probably means, maybe means this area, this area looks, this area looks a bit less bitery than it was before. There's a railway line coming up up here. Uh, oh, there's a core mining drill there. That's why there's a railway line there. Okay, um, maybe it's this area that's been cleared out. Oh yes, yes, I think it's this area. This area has been debited a bit um, because if you remember last last week, this area was cleared out as a, sort of the, the first use of the artillery train, and now it looks like we've got. A slightly more serious wall along here and somewhat fewer biters up here is that because there's pollution sneaking out this way or is it just because it seemed like a good idea no i think it's just because it seemed like a good idea to, to push them back a bit um now this is sort of except for that one that's been apparently been missed 
um, that worm there. <laughs> One big worm left. So now perhaps it would make sense to move this wall up to here and this wall to... Oh, I don't know. I don't know where we'd want to put... I don't know how we'd, how we'd want to seal this area off because that's an awfully long wall to put in. Um, is, this, is there even a way through here? I, that's not the right button. Is there even a way through here for the biters? That looks like shallow water, so I suspect... Yes, the biters can clearly cross over there. So we would, if we wanted to expand this way, we'd need to have a wall across here somewhere to make sure they don't do, well, what we just saw then. Um, now we have artillery to push stuff back. I mean, we could put in a, we could put in a wall across there and maybe across there if it's required. Um, and then up here, maybe it would go... What's the best way to take that to clear this area safe safe this area probably across there even though that's quite a long wall and it's longer than the one I just said I didn't want to put in and across there but yeah there's yeah I, I don't think we need that much more space just yet so at the moment I think we'll we'll see how it goes and maybe maybe expand in a different direction if we decide we want to or actually more likely we'll decide which way we want to expand based on what resources we're short of so at the moment we have a decent amount of iron coming from over here. We've got four million of it still in that patch, which isn't bad at all. We've got all, about two million copper in these two patches. So maybe copper will be the next one, especially the rate we've been getting through it. Um, actually, that said, there's a nice three and a half million of it there. So we're probably okay with copper. Another two up there. Um, so I think iron might be... Yeah, iron is probably going to be the next thing we are short of. So this might be quite a good way to go because there's uh, there's another 5 million iron up here if we grab these two patches. So maybe that's no, that's not where he was cleaning out though. So um, yeah, so maybe we, we, we shall see. And at the moment, we don't have any problems, I don't think. We are bringing in... If we look at the smeltery, <clears throat> we've got a decent supply of copper in these in these uh, warehouses. Um, we've got a decent amount of iron in these ones. So I don't think we are worryingly short of resources just yet. But that day will probably come at some point. We want we want to make sure we don't we don't run out. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a thing we need to keep an eye on, put it that way. We shall see. But they do yeah, there do seem to be some patches around, particularly of copper. So as, as I say, due to the technical difficulties we had last time with the server crash, we haven't achieved quite as much as we normally have. So <clears throat> this week's videos are going to be a little bit shorter than uh, last week's. But then given that last week's came in at almost two hours between the pair, that might actually be a good thing. <laughs> Although the uh, the poll I put out did, did suggest that 75% of people just are very happy to see more content. If, as long as it's sort of, as long as it's interesting and it's not just me sort of saying I'm a fish, I'm a fish, I'm a fish for, for an hour or two. So... Given that uh, you're, you're still here, I'm assuming that means you enjoy the video, so please uh, pre please do like and subscribe, as, um, as Mike has helpfully left a, um, a note down here. Um, it's much appreciated. The more subscribers I can get on the channel, the um, the better it does, and the more and the more time I can spend make, making the videos, and the more worth it it is making the videos, and that sort of thing. Um, please check out the, the uh, channel sponsor, that's trefoil.be. Go to trefoil.be slash lawrenceplays to get a free month of your um, chosen uh, server of choice, where that could, um, could be for Factorio, it could be for Minecraft, it could be for Seven Days to Die, it could be for Mindustry, and so on and so on, all, all of those sort of things. And they've got lots, lots of options in there. Um, we're using them at the moment, and they, yeah, it seems, it seems to work well. Um, there's going to be more videos coming out in the future, of course. We've got the uh, the stream on Monday, so please come along to that. That's where we will be. You'll, you'll be able to see us um, getting on with all of the things I've been talking about today for the future. So Tristan's going to be carrying on uh, out on his uh, his little snowball of Dracket, uh, building up things out here. I shall be carrying out carrying on out here on Taishakuten, and we're getting getting the Vulcanite flowing quite nicely, hopefully. Um, Wednesday night is uh, Dyson Sphere program night, and I'm making some good progress in that too. Actually, I think um, I feel like I've um, I built up a massive processor factory last time, so I think I might be almost ready to start making green science now. And I've been saying that for a while, but it's one of those things where you it's one of those games where you like Factorio, where you spend a lot of your time sort of chasing resource shortages back up the tree. So you go, oh no, I've run out of um, blue circuits. So you go, oh no, that means I need more yellow processors. So you then you go, okay, well I. I haven't got enough uh, space to build those here on this planet, so I'll go and do it on another planet. But oh no, now I've run out of copper, so I'll go and build them on a copper planet. But that means I've not got enough silicon coming. Oh no, I'd have to go off and get some more of that. So it's an endless sort of series of yak shaves going all the way back up the tree to uh, until you've got until you're actually producing everything you need, and then and then you realise there's another science pack to go off and make, and then you need to so you need to do it all over again with a new set of resources. Um, but apparently that's the sort of thing we enjoy when we play these games. So uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. 
so that's Wednesday. I'm trying to I'm trying to get the uh, the GTA videos and the tutorials back up and running again. I'm a little bit short of time for those at the moment. I'm sat, sorry to say, but I'm um, but things are looking pr uh, promising. I, I do want to get them up and running again, and I've I've got I've got some uh, some partial uh, partly complete videos. So we'll we'll see those coming out in the near future, I hope. And then of course at the weekend we can't forget the uh, the catch up videos like the um, the uh, Friday and Saturday videos that show uh, give you a bit of an insight into what we've been getting up to in Factorio, and the one on Sunday with it that does the same sort of thing for Dyson Sphere program. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the, the video and you enjoy the streams when they come out as well. Please make sure you um, you subscribe to the channel because that would be fantastic. It keeps the, keep, keeps everything running, as I've been saying, and come back for the all the future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.